Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and we're going to continue doing the positional rankings for the 2024 United Football League season, and today we're going to give some love to the special teams and be ranking every single team's kicker. Now, I am titling this as kicker, but naturally it is kicker room. It's just that only like half the teams have a room, and that room is just two guys. So, this isn't like the tight end running back of QB rooms, where even though it is still one starter, there's at least really three guys on almost every roster. So, for... Basically, this is just the actual started kicker. Now, before we get into this, like I said before in the past couple videos, the 500 subscriber Q&A is next Monday or Tuesday. So if you have any last minute questions to ask, put them down in the comments below. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the list of ranking every single United Football League team's kicker from worst to best, starting with number eight, the St. Louis Battlehawks. The Battlehawks, again, they suffer on a list, and that is just because of the fact that well, they've got two guys that have no real pro experience. One thing about kickers is a lot of these guys have either played in the USFL or XFL or the NFL. This team is like the only one that has no guy that actually has done that. Now, I think that and Andre Smite actually has a really good chance to be a decent kicker. The fact is that he did have one incredible season back in 2018. But after his freshman year, he just kind of, or his sophomore year... He kind of just fell off a bit. He still had a decent couple of seasons, but there's a reason why he ended up going undrafted and then only made it to a practice squad. But considering the fact that he has shown potential in college is a pretty big deal. Winning a Lou Groza Award is a big deal. And then I think Andrew Mevis, if he wins the job naturally, that shows that he is better because he was a third-team All-American just a couple of years ago. But again, both these guys, have had their ceiling is being on an NFL practice squad. Whereas a lo every other team has at least one kicker that has either played in the NFL or played in spring football. So while I think they have some potential here, I think that it's hard to put them above anyone else. Considering the fact that every other team has at least one guy who is a legit, you know, pro kicker. And the start of that is going to be the DC Defenders at 7. Now the Defenders, they're a bit weird. Now, currently the projected starter is probably Matt McCrane just because he was their actual kicker last year. He did go 12 of 16 from the field, or from field goals. As you remember, the XFL didn't have extra points last year, like kicking extra points, which is what the league is going to have this year. So it's about how good you were as an actual field goal kicker, and he was really solid when you consider short-range kicks. The issue was that four of his misses, one of them was from 20 to 29, one was from 30 to 39, one was 40 to 49, and then one was a 50-plus yarder. So... His accuracy is overall pretty solid. Those aren't terrible numbers, 12 of 16. You'd like it to be better, but it could be a lot worse we've seen. Now, the question is in Enrique Yeni. This is a guy who didn't make it in the CFL, but then went to the LFA, which is a Spanish league, and was one of the best kickers in the league, if not the best. He has a insanely good leg. He does do double duty. He can be a punter for your team. And as a kicker, he has kicked 60-yard field goals. It's just hard to value how much does being an LFA kicker really, you know, amount to something. Why didn't he get an NFL shot? Is it considered just that far down in the pecking order? And he was only, and I know only is, you know, crazy to say, but only a two-time All-Star in this past season. He wasn't. It, it's tough. I think that he definitely could be a very, very, very solid kicker. It's just hard to judge how a guy that never got an NFL shot, didn't make it in the CFL, and then did make it in the LFA translates to basically the second highest league of pro football in America, not counting the CFL. So, is it going to translate? We'll see. Is there an argument the defender should be higher because he does have a lot of upside since, as I said, he has kicked big field goals? We'll see. It might be a bit crazy to put him this low, but like I said, it's just hard to fully justify putting a guy that has no NFL experience and not even really CFL experience for that matter above these other guys that have NFL experience and are guys that have proven to be good kickers in this league or in the US or XFL. That's just me. Let me know if you agree with that down in the comments below, but at least for me, I'm putting him at seven. Now, coming in at number six, is going to be the Michigan Panthers. I... The Panthers, it was tough. It's just, I don't know. Technically, they have two kickers on their roster, but Jake Bates is basically going to be a kickoff specialist. He was one of the best kickoff guys in college football. It's all he did was kickoffs. This or Back in 2022, his senior year, he actually was first-team All-SEC as a kickoff specialist. He was one of the best in the entire country. 
So, especially as we've talked about before, having the US-12 kickoff, having a good kickoff kicker is actually a pretty big deal. As I've talked about in US-12 videos in the past, having guys that can get touchbacks very consistent is a massive deal in the UFL now that we have the USL kickoff. So having a guy like Bates on your roster would be really nice to have. It just naturally does kind of bloat your roster as you lose one extra spot. But then Cole Murphy, this past season he was good. 78 field goal percentage, 14 of 18. 13 to 17 extra points, which isn't really that great. It's, yeah, he has kicked some longer field goals. He doesn't have, he hasn't shown the leg the same as Enrique did in the LFA, but I'm putting him higher just a bit. The only issue is that Cole Murphy didn't really get a ton of shots because the offense basically had about like three weeks during the regular season this past year where it actually was good. Two of those were the Josh Love games and then the second half of the final game against the Stars. So... I'm going to put them at 6. I would understand an argument to put them down at 7 and move the defenders up. But he does have experience in the USFL. The Panthers decided to keep him instead of drafting one of the many good kickers available in the USFL dispersal draft. So that does show something. So putting him at 6. And coming in at number 5 is going to be the San Antonio Brahmas. Okay, let's just start right here. Their backup kicker. Destroying is probably not going to make the roster. The fact is, he hasn't actually played at all really since 2019 with the Argonauts, and even then, he was a practice squad guy. He did kick in the preseason, but yeah, I don't expect him to actually win the job over Matt Amendola. Amendola is an NFL kicker, he's been there for years. Now, has he been a great NFL kicker? Not really. Why? As you can see in the stats, he has not made a 50-plus yard field goal. He has five attempts, never made one. But if you eliminate the far-range kicks, 24 of 30 is not that bad. That's not awesome, but that's not terrible. The fact is, there's a reason why he got shot after shot. He's with the Jets, he's with the Cardinals, he's with the Chiefs, with the Texans. So he keeps getting shots, and at extra point kicking, he was pretty solid. And remember, the X, or the NFL extra points are a bit farther back. Those are actually somewhat difficult compared to like the USFLs, which are basically the old way, which are freebies. So he has shown that he can kick pretty accurately on the shorter range kicks. When you look at it, 20 to 29 yard field goals, he hasn't ever missed. 30 to 39 yarders, he's only missed once. So considering the fact that the way kicking is going to be in the UFL is that all these offenses are going to primarily get the ball around the 40 thanks to all the punt and kickoff rules. They're only going to need to get about like 30, 40 yards, and then you're in Amendola's range. That is pretty good. Essentially, sub 40 yarders, he's one of, if not the best kicker in the league. It's just the distance kicks, that's where he struggles at. So I'm putting him at five because of that, and then destroying, he's the publicity stunt guy. If he does earn a spot, great for him. It's just that the odds of him actually earning it over Amendola are pretty low. Odds are he probably stays on as a practice squad guy or something, we'll see. I know ever since he, you know, signed there, the Brahma social media accounts have just boomed up in, you know, follows and likes and all that. So I'm putting him at five. Amendola, if he was better at far range, I'd move him higher, but five is a decent spot. Now, number four is going to be the Birmingham Stallions. The Stallions headed into the dispersal draft with their one major weakness being kicker thanks to the loss of Brandon Aubrey, who went on to be a first-team All-Pro kicker in the NFL. Now, Chris Blewett, I've said before, they had guys they could have drafted instead of him, but he's still a solid kicker. With the Maulers this past season, he had an 84 field goal percentage. 21 of 25 is not bad. His extra point left some to be desired. 10 of 13 isn't that great, but... This is one of the teams that only has one kicker on the roster because they pretty much drafted him saying, hey, he's going to be our guy. This is a really solid kicker, all things considered. Blewett, is he, in my opinion, a top-tier kicker? No. Were there kickers in the USL better than him? Yes. But is he still really solid? Yes. So, number four, solid kicker, basically all you can say. The number three is going to be the Arlington Renegades, another team that only has one kicker on the roster, and that is Taylor Rosalino. He was on their roster this past season. He was their kicker this past year. He had the second most field goals made this past season, and he was pretty damn good at it. I mean, 16 of 19, is that unbelievable? No. But when you consider the fact that this guy made two of three 50-plus yard kicks, that's a good sign. One of two from 40 to 49 isn't the best, 
But the 20 to 29 yarders, he was perfect 6 for 6 and 6 for 7 to 30, 39. That gets the job done. That's really good. So he does have a leg. He is one of the more accurate kickers in the league. Three is a good spot for him. This is definitely in the, these top three kickers are the top three kickers and the kickers I assume are going to be in the running for all UFL, but he is the worst of the three great kickers and that's why I have him at three. He's really solid, but there's two guys that are better than him. And one of those guys is Luis Aguilar. Said it before, I think that everyone got too caught up in the eight for eight game and they gave him the all USFL honors when there was a guy that clearly was the better kicker all in all. Here's the thing, Aguilar can do double duty. He is a punter. He can do triple duty, kickoffs, punting, and kicking the ball for field goals. That's incredible. But this list is purely based on kickers. So, as a kicker, he was 25 of 29, 86 percentage. Not bad, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. 19 and 20 extra points, really good. The issue, take away his incredible game where he single-handedly beat the Generals, going 8 for 8 in what I have said of dubbed the greatest game a kicker has ever had in pro football history. Only time a kicker's gone 8 for 8 in a pro football league, or even college, if I'm not mistaken, and had a walk-off game-winning field goal as well. So, I have a full in-depth review, actually, of that video. If you want to go see it, click the top right of the video. So, eliminate the 8 for 8 game. You're talking about a pretty decent season of 17 of 21. 17 of 21 is not nearly as good as 25 of 29. So you eliminate his one 8 for 8 game. He was overall pretty solid. He had multiple games where he missed kicks. And the fact is that percentage-wise, there were two guys who clearly had him beat in basically every statistical category in terms of you know percentages and especially in extra points. Yet, he got the all US felt nod, and I fully believe it's because of that incredible game he had against the Generals. He still is an elite kicker. The fact that he did do 8 for 8 and had a walk-off field goal shows that this is a guy that you can rely on in the clutch moments. Because I remember watching that game live thinking, surely he's going to miss this kick. There's no way he goes 8 for 8. And he made it. But I'm putting him at 2. Number 1 is going to be Matt Coughlin of the Showboats. I'm shocked that he wasn't drafted higher. Look, he did have like a 5-for-5 five five game early in the season, but the bottom line is 18-of-19 on field goals and then 25-25 of 25 extra points. It's over. You're number one. I mean, you, you can't argue that. You just can't. 18-19 and 19 field goals, 25-25 of 25 extra points. You can't. Aubrey was the only guy that, was, that actually was in the running for the best kicker in the league this past year, in my opinion. But Coughlin was incredible. The dude was insanely accurate, and because of the fact that Breakers scored a ton of touchdowns, he didn't get the same field goal opportunities other teams did. But whenever he went out to kick extra points, he didn't shank them, he didn't whiff, he kicked them through the uprights. It may be a short kick, but if you've watched the USFL and their extra points both the previous years, you know kickers can miss those really, really easy kicks. Even in the NFL, we've seen it. So, Coughlin doing that, 25-25 is incredible. And then 18-19 and from field goal, it's insane. I don't see an argument for anyone being above him. The dude was a monster with the Breakers, and the fact that they, the other teams in the USFL allowed him to go back to Filippo in Memphis. I mean, hey, whenever a team loses on a walk-off field goal or because their kicker, you know, Coughlin goes 4-for-4 four four in a game, hey, they'll know who to blame themselves for letting him go there when they could have had him. He is the best kicker in the league. I'd rather have him than anybody else, naturally. So, easy, number one is the Showboats. So I'll do it for this list of position rankings and the kickers. I am hoping to, I don't know when this is coming out. I'm hoping that either before this or after this, there is a defensive position ranking video coming out. And I'm planning to do the power rankings video for training camp on training camp weekend. I might push it back to do an extra position ranking or two. We'll see. But as always, guys, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified as soon as I upload any videos. We're actually closing in on 600 subscribers already, which is crazy. And, hey, you guys seem to love this content of the position ranking, so let me know if there's any you specifically want me to try and do. And as always, guys, have a great night.